Prophet Isaiah Sees the Throne of Heaven Imagine walking into a room and seeing the most incredible sight ever. This vision of the throne of heaven is more than just a fancy sight. It shows us how great and holy God is. It's like Isaiah is giving us a peek into a world far beyond ours, where the ruler of everything sits in all his glory. Can you even imagine what it would be like to see something like that? Who was Isaiah? And why did God choose him to see the throne of heaven? Isaiah, the son of Amos, lived during a very unstable and chaotic period where he served under four kings. Think about being a religious leader when there's a lot of political and social trouble going on. Isaiah was a special kind of prophet with a deep and significant role. He might have been a priest too, since he was called by God to the temple, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 4, a place usually meant for priests. Being in this role would have given Isaiah a special perspective to see and make sense of what was happening during those times. Isaiah, whose name means Yahweh is salvation, is a very important person in the Old Testament. He is known not only for his prophecies, but also for the big impact he had on the religious and political life in the old kingdom of Judah. His book is full of prophecies about the future Savior Jesus and provides an interesting look into the thoughts and feelings of a man who was truly devoted to God. But why did God show him the throne of heaven? Isaiah's vision of the throne, as recorded in Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 3, occurs at a unique moment in time. It's like God is saying, Look, Isaiah, despite the chaos and corruption in Judah, I am still sovereign. My throne is unshaken. This vision was a reminder of God's majesty and holiness, set against the backdrop of human sinfulness and frailty. Isaiah's reaction to his vision is quite revealing. Isaiah's Vision Isaiah begins by mentioning a specific time, which places his vision in an actual historical setting. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and honored. His long clothing spread out and filled the house of God. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 This was a time of uncertainty and transition for the nation of Judah. King Isaiah had been a strong leader, and his death marked the end of an era. In times like these, you were tempted to ask questions like, What's going to happen to us? Who will lead us now? In the midst of this backdrop, Isaiah's vision takes on even greater significance. The concept of the throne of heaven is a central and powerful theme in the Bible, which represents God's absolute sovereignty holiness, and authority. Who was on the throne? The Bible makes it clear, it is God himself. In his vision, Isaiah sees the Lord seated on a throne high and exalted. The majesty and loftiness of the throne represent God's supreme authority and status above all earthly powers. It's like a reassurance to Isaiah and the people of Judah Earthly kings come and go, but God's reign is eternal. God's robe spreading out and covering the whole temple is a picture that really shows how glorious and magnificent God is. Just think about how amazing it would be to see something like that. In several passages, God's throne is described as the locus of his reign over the universe. Jesus. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 34, refers to heaven as God's throne, echoing God's statement in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. This verse of the scripture presents God as the supreme ruler, with heaven as his royal court, 
and the earth as a mere footstool in comparison to his grandeur. Isn't it inspiring to think of the entire universe as just a footrest for God's throne? When Isaiah sees the Lord high and exalted seated on a throne in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, it's not about witnessing a physical scene, but rather understanding the magnificence and splendor of God's being. The vision of the throne helps us understand God's greatness and honor in a way we can grasp. After all, how else can we truly understand God, who is limitless and without a physical form, in a way that makes sense to us? Then come the seraphim, these mysterious six-winged beings. With two wings they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 2 their actions are steeped in reverence and humility. Even these heavenly creatures cannot bear to look directly at God or present themselves without modesty in His presence. What does that say about the holiness of God? The seraphim's cry of holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 Echoes through the vision emphasizing God's holiness. The repetition of holy three times isn't just for emphasis. It's a symbol of perfection and completeness. The sight was so incredible that the ground at the doorway shook with the voice of the one calling out, and the temple became full of smoke. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 4. Imagine how amazed and scared Isaiah must have felt seeing this. Isaiah's personal encounter with the seraphim. Here's where the vision takes a turn. One of the seraphim flies to Isaiah with a live coal in hand, taken from the altar, and touches his lips. The seraph says, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 6 through 7. This action represents something more than it seems. It's like God is getting Isaiah ready, not only clearing him from his wrongdoings, but also picking him for an important mission. Then God speaks, asking, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Here Isaiah responds with the words, Here am I, send me. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 Isaiah, having been cleansed and made aware of God's holiness, willingly accepts the call to be God's messenger. Meaning and Significance In Isaiah's vision, the seraphim plays an incredibly important role. These celestial beings are not just background characters in the heavenly scene. They are central to understanding the nature of God and our relationship with the divine. These fiery angels, the seraphim, surround God's throne, continually worshiping him. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 2 through 3. The term seraphim is derived from the Hebrew word seraph, which translates to burning ones or fiery ones. This name really says a lot. It hints at beings filled with intense love and enthusiasm for God. They're not half-hearted or inactive. Their whole being is all about their deep love and respect for God. Isn't it interesting to imagine beings whose whole reason for being is to continuously adore and worship God? Their reverence for God. The act of covering their faces and feet can be seen as a sign of humility and reverence. It's as if they're saying, even in our exalted state, we are not worthy to gaze directly upon the Lord or to stand fully exposed in His holy presence. This humble posture before God is something worth pondering. Seraphim and Serpents The connection of the seraphim with serpents is intriguing. 
The Hebrew word seraph is also used to describe fiery serpents. In some ancient cultures, serpents were symbols of transformation and healing. This association might suggest the transformative nature of the seraphim's presence. They are not just passive worshippers, but active participants in God's work, bringing about change and renewal, which Isaiah witnessed in his vision. Seraphim's Role in Isaiah's Vision In Isaiah's vision, the seraphim show us different aspects of how we should relate to God. Their intense love and constant worship are examples of how deeply and passionately we should connect with God. The way they act with such humility and respect teaches us the right attitude to have when we come close to God. Also, their role in making things pure shows us how God's presence can really change and make our lives better. So what can we learn from these fiery beings? Perhaps it is a call to ignite our passion for God, to approach Him with deep reverence, and to be open to the transformative experiences that come with encountering the Divine. The Seraphim, in their worship and service, set a profound example for us. How then will we respond to this example? Will we seek to emulate their burning love for God and their reverence for His presence? The Seraphim challenges us not just to admire their devotion, but to reflect it in our own lives. Isaiah's Response to the Vision In this moment of divine revelation, Isaiah becomes acutely aware of his own unworthiness. He exclaims, Woe to me! I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 This self-awareness of sinfulness in the presence of divine holiness is a powerful moment in the narrative. It reminds us that true encounters with God are not just about wonder, they are also about conviction and transformation. This is a powerful lesson for us. When we see God in His majesty and holiness, it shall lead us to self-examination and transformation. It's not just about beholding, it's about becoming. Are we allowing our encounters with God to change us, to prepare us for the work He has for us? So why did God choose Isaiah, and for what purpose? Isaiah was more than a prophet. He was a person who deeply believed in and humbly followed God. His strong dedication to God and his skill in explaining difficult religious ideas made him the perfect choice. God picked Isaiah to be a spokesperson, to share God's plans, decisions, and promises with others. Isaiah's predictions, especially about the future Messiah, were very important in preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ and the rescue of all people. Isaiah's vision of the throne of heaven was more than just a personal spiritual experience. It was a call to action. It was a reminder that in times of uncertainty and moral decline, God's sovereignty remains unchallenged. It was a message of hope and a prompt to realign our lives with God's will. Seeing God high and lifted up in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 wasn't just about Isaiah's understanding of God's majesty. It was about him and us, recognizing that no matter what's going on around us, God is in control. This vision isn't just a story from long ago. It's a living challenge to us. Are we ready to respond to God's call like Isaiah did, saying, Here am I, send me? Message Behind the Vision In understanding the connection between the vision of Isaiah and the death of King Uzziah, it's like piecing together a historical puzzle with spiritual significance. Let's dive into this thoughtfully. In times of uncertainty, where do we look? 
Isaiah looked up, and what did he see? He saw the Lord in all his majesty. It's a powerful reminder, isn't it? When our earthly securities fail, when those we depend on are no more, isn't it comforting to know that there's a higher throne, an unshakable one? The vision was more than just a glimpse of God. It showed who was really in charge. This happened at a time when Judah probably felt like they were without direction or leadership. But here's the interesting part. While Judah's throne was empty, Isaiah got to see God's throne in heaven, which was not empty. It's as if the vision was telling Isaiah and us, instead of worrying about what's missing, remember what you still have with God. Now, what does this mean for us today? We face uncertainties, don't we? Leaders come and go, and situations change. But this vision tells us that there's a constant in the chaos. It's a message as relevant today as it was then. God is sovereign. He's the ultimate ruler, and his reign is not just for a time, but for eternity. The vision of Isaiah is a call to trust in God's authority, to find hope in his eternal reign, especially in times of earthly uncertainty. It's an invitation to see beyond our immediate circumstances and realize the bigger picture of God's plan. But it's also a call to action. Like Isaiah, once we've seen the glory of God, once we've been transformed by His holiness, we're called to respond to say, Here am I, send me. Three unique details about Heaven's throne. Number one, God's holiness. What's so special about this vision? First off, Isaiah sees God on a throne, which is a pretty clear symbol of authority and majesty. But it's not just any throne. It's high and lifted up. This isn't just about physical height. It speaks of God's supreme status, far above any earthly power. It's like saying, look, no matter what's happening on earth, God's throne is above all that. But then the main point in this vision is the emphasis on God's holiness. The seraphim cry, holy, 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 which in Hebrew, Repetition is considered as a way of expressing the superlative. It's like saying God is the holiest of the holy. What Isaiah sees is a God who is utterly pure, completely set apart from anything else. This isn't just about moral purity. It's about God being different, distinct, in a league of his own. Isaiah's vision challenges our often casual view of God. It's easy to forget how incredibly awesome and holy God is. We might say, God is great, but do we really grasp what that means? Isaiah's vision is a vivid reminder of God's overwhelming majesty and holiness. It's a call to approach God with awe and reverence, recognizing that He's not just a slightly bigger or smarter version of us, but entirely different entirely holy. So, in essence, what Isaiah sees is a breathtaking display of God's holiness, a holiness that sets him apart from everything and everyone else. It's a reminder that when we talk about God, we're not just talking about a higher power, we're talking about the highest, the Holy One, whose very nature defines what it means to be holy. Number two, God's glory filling the earth. When Isaiah saw God's throne, he witnessed something that completely transformed his understanding of God and his glory. Imagine walking into a room and being immediately struck by the most magnificent sight you've ever seen. That's what happened to Isaiah. He describes this in Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 4. This isn't just a grand throne room scene. It's a glimpse into the very nature of God. But here's an amazing point. 
the whole earth is full of his glory. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3. Isaiah understands that God's magnificence isn't limited to just his vision of heaven. It's everywhere on earth. It's like when you watch a stunning sunset and feel amazed. That's like getting a small look at how wonderful God's glory is. So, what Isaiah sees differently is this overwhelming sense of God's greatness and glory. It's not just that God is big and powerful. It's that His majesty and beauty are everywhere. It's a reminder to us that wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we're surrounded by God's incredible glory. Number 3. God's Awesomeness All right, let's talk about Isaiah's vision and focus particularly on the awesomeness of God's throne. This vision is like a jaw-dropping scene straight out of a divine blockbuster. Imagine Isaiah, probably just going about his usual prophet duties, and suddenly he's given a VIP pass to see the divine throne room. So what does he see? First off, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 sets the stage. He's not just a king, he's the king of kings. Then there's the detail about his robe filling the temple. This isn't just some fashion statement. The robe filling the entire temple symbolizes God's presence that cannot be contained. It's like God's majesty and glory are so vast, they spill over, filling every nook and cranny of the place. Isaiah's vision of God's throne is like a mind-blowing revelation of God's absolute awesomeness. It's not just about seeing a throne, it's about understanding who sits on it, an utterly holy, supremely sovereign and overwhelmingly majestic God. This vision challenges us to think, do we truly grasp the awesomeness of the God we worship? In Isaiah's vision of the throne of heaven, we see a powerful picture of what God and his rule are all about. A place of power and authority. In Isaiah's vision, God's throne is shown as the ultimate place where he rules and has authority over everything, including angels. This is similar to what we read in 2 Chronicles chapter 18 verse 18 and Job chapter 1 verse 6, where God's throne is described as a place of control and command, a place of majesty and honor. Just like Jesus is described as sitting at the right hand of the throne of God in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, showing great honor and shared authority with God, Isaiah's vision also reflects this greatness and respect. A place of perfect justice. In Isaiah's vision, the throne is where God makes just and fair decisions. This is like Psalm chapter 9 verse 7 and Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15, where the throne is a spot for God's important judgments, a place of sovereignty and holiness. In Psalm chapter 47 verse 8, God's throne is linked to his rule and holiness. Isaiah's vision also shows this, reminding us that everything God does is based on his holy nature a place of praise. The throne in Isaiah's vision is surrounded by continuous worship and praise, just as in Revelation chapter 14 verse 3 and Psalm chapter 66 verse 2. It's a place that celebrates God's glory. A place of purity. Just as Revelation chapter 14 verse 5 says only those made right by Christ can be before the throne, Isaiah's vision implies a similar purity required in God's presence. A source of life. Like Revelation chapter 22 verse 1 shows the throne as a life-giving source, Isaiah's vision also points to God as the giver of all life. A place of grace and mercy. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 tells us to confidently approach God's throne for mercy and help. 
Isaiah's vision supports this idea of a throne where God's grace is available. In the end, God's throne represents his ultimate plan for everything he has created. For this reason also, because he obeyed and so completely humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in submission of those who are in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and that every tongue will confess and openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, Sovereign God, to the glory of God the Father. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 through 11. So, what does this verse have to do with Isaiah's vision? Well, Isaiah's vision shows us a magnificent picture of God's throne, surrounded by a seraphim, and emphasizes God's holiness and majesty. Now, fast forward to Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 through 11. Here, we see Jesus Christ being given the highest honor and authority, a place and recognition that echoes the sovereignty and reverence that Isaiah witnessed. It's like God is saying, just as my throne in heaven is the ultimate symbol of authority and holiness, so too is Jesus who reflects and embodies these divine qualities. The kneeling and tongue confessing mentioned in Philippians signify a universal acknowledgement of Jesus' lordship and authority. This ties back to Isaiah's vision, where the seraphim are in constant worship of God's holiness. Both passages point to a recognition of divine authority and majesty. In Isaiah, it's God's throne. In Philippians, it's Jesus Christ. In essence, both Isaiah's vision and Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 through 11 highlight the theme of God's supreme authority and the rightful worship and acknowledgement that comes with it. Isaiah shows us the majesty of God on his throne, and Philippians shows us that Jesus shares in this divine majesty and authority. It's a powerful reminder of the grandeur and authority of both God the Father and Jesus Christ in our faith. Revelation chapter 4 verses 10 through 11 shows even the greatest beings in heaven acknowledging God's worthiness. In short, the throne of heaven in Isaiah's vision is more than just a grand seat. It's a symbol of God's total authority, holiness, and control over the universe. It represents his fairness, kindness, and central role in everything's fate. This vision makes us think, how do we see God's throne in our own lives? Are we giving it the respect, honor, and obedience it deserves? What does Isaiah's vision teach us about God? Isaiah's vision teaches us profound truths about God. This vision like Job's encounter with God, brings us face to face with the raw majesty of the Almighty. Let's unpack what this vision teaches us about God, using simple terms and reflecting on its relevance today. Glimpse number one. God is alive. Isn't it fascinating that Isaiah starts his vision with, in the year that King Isaiah died, this juxtaposition of a human king's death with the vision of the Almighty emphasizes a vital truth. Earthly rulers come and go, but God is eternal. He is the Alpha and Omega, Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, unchanging and everlasting. It's like saying, despite all the changes in our world, isn't it comforting to know that God remains constant Glimpse number two, God is omnipotent. The phrase high and lifted up speaks volumes about God's power. It tells us that no one can match his might. In a world where power is often abused, isn't it incredible to know that the ultimate power rests with a just and merciful God? My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose 
says the Lord in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. It reassures us that God's plans are unstoppable. Glimpse number three. God is magnificent and glorious. The image of God's robe filling the temple represents His unmatched glory and splendor. This vision invites us to marvel at the magnificence of God, the ultimate creator whose beauty and creativity are beyond comprehension. Reflecting on this, we might ask ourselves, how do these truths about God influence the way we live, the way we see the world, and the way we relate to God? In a world that is constantly changing and often uncertain, how does our understanding of God as eternal, all-powerful and supremely holy shape our faith and our actions? Isaiah's vision, much like Job's humbling experience, invites us to a deeper and more fulfilled relationship with God. It challenges us to look beyond our limited perspectives and to embrace the grandeur and majesty of God. And in doing so, it calls us to live lives that reflect our understanding and reverence of who God is. Other Prophets Who Saw the Throne of Heaven This is like taking a tour through some of the most inspiring moments in the Bible, where prophets caught a glimpse of the Divine Majesty. Ezekiel First up, let's consider Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1, he starts with, now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Kibar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Imagine being by a river, and suddenly the heavens open up. Pretty dramatic, right? Ezekiel goes on to describe a whirlwind, creatures with multiple faces and wheels within wheels, all under a dome. Above this dome was something like a throne, and on it, a figure that looked like a man, but shone like glowing metal with fire inside. Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 26 through 28. The central theme is clear, the glory and majesty of God, much like Isaiah's vision. Daniel. In Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 through 10, he describes a vision of thrones being set in place and the Ancient of Days taking his seat. His clothing was as white as snow and the hair on his head was like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames and wheels of burning fire. A river of fire flowed from before him. Thousands served him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. This is not just a grand vision, but it's loaded with deep insights connected to Isaiah's vision of heaven's throne. It speaks of God's eternal authority and the ultimate judgment. These visions, like Isaiah's, reveal the majesty and holiness of God but they also serve another purpose. They remind us of God's sovereignty and control over all things, including the flow of history and the ultimate judgment. Think about it. How comforting and inspiring is it to know that despite the chaos in the world, there's a divine throne that stands firm and unshaken. But there's more to these visions. They're not just about the prophets having an outstanding moment. These experiences transformed them. They came away with a deeper understanding of God's power and holiness, and a renewed sense of purpose. It's like they were saying, Okay, now that I've seen this, I just can't go back to business as usual. These prophets' experiences, much like Isaiah's, weren't just cool spiritual experiences. They were divine encounters that revealed God's glory and sovereignty, and in turn, deeply impacted their lives and ministries. So, isn't it fascinating to think about how these ancient visions still speak to us today, 
reminding us of the unchanging power and majesty of God. Application Today What can we learn from Isaiah's life and his vision of the throne of heaven? Humility and Reverence It teaches us about the importance of humility and reverence for God. Isaiah's vision is a reminder of God's supreme holiness and our need for His grace. It also emphasizes the sovereignty of God over all earthly affairs. No matter how chaotic the situation, God's throne remains unshaken. Staying Strong in the Faith Moreover, Isaiah's life and ministry encourage us to be steadfast in our faith even in the face of challenges and societal decay. His deep understanding of God's nature and his commitment to proclaiming God's truth, regardless of personal cost, is a powerful example for us today. Witness for God In today's world, where we constantly hear so many people trying to get our attention, Isaiah's way of always directing people towards God and not focusing on himself is really something we can learn from. His skill in expressing deep spiritual ideas in a beautiful and poetic way shows that he had a strong connection with what God feels and wants. Reflection Think about Isaiah's vision of the throne of heaven. Let's ask ourselves, how do we respond to the reality of God's sovereignty and holiness? Are we like Isaiah, willing to speak God's truth, even when it's uncomfortable or unpopular? Isaiah's life challenges us to look beyond our circumstances, to see the bigger picture of God's plan, and to play our part in it with humility and faith. The vision of the prophet Isaiah seeing the throne of heaven is a profound image that resonates deeply, even in our modern times. Isaiah's encounter, where he saw the Lord seated on a high and exalted throne, with the train of his robe filling the temple, surrounded by seraphim singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. It's not just an ancient story, but a powerful message relevant to us today. In a world often engulfed in confusion and strife, don't you think we need a reminder of who is truly in control? Isaiah's vision does exactly that. It reminds us of God's sovereignty and holiness, something we need to grasp, especially when chaos seems to reign around us. The reference God has also given you a work to do emphasizes the importance of understanding our purpose and role as believers. Like Isaiah, each of us is given a task by God, something that carries eternal significance. But to effectively carry out this task, where should our focus be? The answer is simple yet profound. Our minds should be set on things above, not on earthly things. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Isaiah's vision directs our attention to the heavenly realm, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. This perspective is crucial. Why? Because it shapes everything we do. It influences how we act in our homes, workplaces, communities, and churches. When we align our minds with God's truth and holiness, we find the strength and guidance to navigate the challenges of life. Now, how do we align with this heavenly perspective? The key lies in God's word. Jesus prayed, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. The Bible is not just a collection of stories and moral lessons. It's a living, breathing guide that reveals the holiness of God and our calling to reflect that holiness in our lives. Have you experienced the transforming power of God's truth in your life? Consider the call to holiness. 
but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15-16 through 16. This isn't a suggestion. It's a command. But how can we live out this call to holiness in a world that often seems anything but holy? This is where Isaiah's vision becomes practical. It's not just about the grand display of the heavenly throne. It's about transformation. When Isaiah saw God's holiness, he also recognized his own sinfulness and the sinfulness of his people. This realization led to his confession and subsequently his cleansing. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 5 through 7. Only then was he ready to say, Here am I, send me. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Are we willing to go through this process of realization, confession, and transformation? In essence, Isaiah's vision calls us to a higher standard. It's a reminder that we are not just wandering aimlessly through life, but we are called to reflect God's holiness in a world that desperately needs it. It's about understanding that our actions, words, and thoughts have eternal consequences. So, as we ponder Isaiah's vision today, let's ask ourselves, are we focusing on the heavenly perspective in our daily lives? Are we allowing God's truth to sanctify and transform us? Are we ready to say, Here am I, send me, and do the work God has called us to do? In conclusion, Isaiah's vision is a breathing call to action. It challenges us to look beyond our circumstances, to fix our eyes on the holiness of God, and to live out that holiness in a world in need of divine truth and love. Remember, we are not just working for today, we are working for eternity. Heavenly Father, we gather in your presence, hearts open and spirits humbled, inspired by the vision of the prophet Isaiah, who saw your throne in heaven. As we reflect on this divine revelation, we seek to understand its meaning in our lives and the world around us. Lord, we acknowledge your majesty and glory, so powerfully depicted in Isaiah's vision. You are holy, all-powerful, and unmatched in how great you are. When we see how magnificent you are, we realize our own weaknesses and flaws. But because you are so merciful, you welcome us to get to know you better and feel your love. We pray for a deeper understanding of your holiness, so that like Isaiah, we might be amazed by your purity and righteousness. May this understanding inspire us to live lives that reflect your holiness, seeking justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with you. In the vision, the seraphim stood above you, each with six wings proclaiming, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. May these words resonate in our hearts, reminding us of your omnipresence and the beauty of your creation. Help us to see your glory in the world around us, in the kindness of strangers, the laughter of children, and the beauty of nature. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, our unworthiness and the many times we have fallen short of your glory. Like Isaiah, we confess our unclean lips and the unclean lips of our communities. In your infinite compassion, cleanse us, forgive our sins, and empower us to speak words of truth, love, and encouragement. We are inspired by Isaiah's response to your call. When you asked, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Isaiah answered, Here am I, send me. Instill in us the same willingness to serve you, to be your messengers, 
in a world that so desperately needs your hope and light. Give us the courage to say, Here am I, Lord. Use me according to your will. In times of trial and uncertainty, when the path ahead seems clouded, remind us of the steadfastness of your throne. Just as Isaiah saw you seated unshaken above all, let us find comfort in your unchanging nature and sovereign control over all things. May this assurance give us peace in the midst of chaos and confidence to face the challenges of our days. We pray for those who have not yet experienced the wonder of your love and the transformation it brings. May your spirit move in their hearts, revealing the truth of your gospel, just as you revealed your glory to Isaiah. Use us as instruments of your grace to share the good news and to be examples of your love in action. We ask for the grace to live out the lessons of Isaiah's vision in our everyday lives. Help us to be attentive to your voice, to respond to your calling with eagerness, and to walk in the paths you set before us. Teach us to be agents of your peace, bearers of your light, and vessels of your love. Finally, Lord, we pray for a revival in our hearts and in our communities. May the wonder of your holy presence, as seen by Isaiah, ignite a passion within us to seek you more earnestly, to worship you more fervently, and to serve you more faithfully. We lay our prayers before your throne, trusting in your goodness and mercy. May our lives be a testament to your unending grace and the transformative power of encountering your holy presence. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen.